spring hockey, summer on ice sessions. And I wonder sometimes, does it ever leave any time for just joy? And a lot of parents and players will tell you, well, if you don't do it, you fall behind. Everybody else is doing it. And so if they're doing it, then we got to kind of do it. And I'm not sure I necessarily believe that. There is obviously a point in time at 14, 15, 16, if you're an elite level player, where you do have to declare your focus. But my, our kids grew up playing lacrosse in the summer and, and hockey in the winter. And I think it, it's great athletically to, to do more than and run out there and just be on the ice constantly in spring hockey or on summer ice sessions. Um, that professionalism that I talked about also extends to the coaching fraternity as well. That's part of the reason why you're here. You want to get better. And you want to, in many cases, move up the ladder. And so in, to do the best job possible, what, what's, what are you being measured by? Is it wins or development or, you know, how are you going about that? So then I ask you this question as a, as a minor hockey coach or any coach, you know, what joy are you providing to your players? Because at, at the root of it, it still has to be fun. When I coached, I ran into a guy named Paul Crowley. He, he owned a company called Canadian Hockey Enterprises in Peterborough. If you ever, they do the adult hockey tournaments in Lake Placid, or they used to. And Paul used to um, uh, coach minor hockey in Peterborough. He coached in the OHL too. I think if Steve Spot or Pete DeBoer were here, they might tell you a story about how they punched him out once in a junior game in Plymouth, but that's another story. Um, but he told me, I asked him, do you have any really good ideas of, as a coach for to coach these kids? And he says, yeah. He goes, start every practice you have with a little mini game. I, what do you mean? He says, make sure the kids have some fun at the beginning of practice. Take five minutes at the beginning of every practice. You got 15 skaters, make it four on four at one end of the ice, make it four on three at the other end, drop in an assistant coach and make it four on four to round it out and basically play the half court game and encourage the kids to play hard, to play fast and be as creative and have as much fun as they possibly can for five minutes. And so we did it, and it was the best thing I ever did. And what it, what it made me realize was that there's, there's no better warm up. These kids would get in an absolute lather, physically, emotionally, mentally. After four or five minutes of playing this game, they were so totally engaged in what you were going to do that they, they they were just thrilled to be at practice, and they were ready to work hard and go the next 60 or 90 minutes, whatever the, the case may be. And I think we always have to keep finding ways to, to try and make things, to, to package this thing more, where there's a little more fun. My son's the assistant coach, assistant general manager of the Kitchener Rangers, and even under Steve Spot before, but Mike Van Ryan last year, they started, um, certainly on game day skates and some other practices, they would play music during practice. You know, and there's a lot of hardline guys and old school guys would say, oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. No, think about it for a moment. The kids really like music. If you don't need to communicate a ridiculous amount to them, and on a game day skate, most coaches aren't communicating to their players. Um, what's the harm in having music playing while you're practicing? And I, I, I thought about this as I was coming here, and I thought, well, you wouldn't know it from looking at me, but I like to ride my bike about 10 kilometers to Fenlon Falls for breakfast in the morning. And I get on my bike and I go. Now, sometimes I forget to take my iPod with me. And it's nice for the first five or 10 minutes. You hear the birds tweeting and it's a nice ride and what have you. But after a while, 10 kilometers is 10 kilometers. It's work. But on the days when I remember to bring my iPod and I've got my headphones in and I'm riding my bike, I mean, that hill on concession three, it's a steep one and it's a long one. When I've got music pumping,